how I live and uphold my love of minimalism in a crazy, chaotic, very messy household of three children as a working mum trying to stay sane. Welcome back to my channel, Sugar Mama TV. I am financial planner, Canna Campbell. And as you guys know, I am also a working mother of three, plus hairy, messy dogs as well. Now, as you may know from following my YouTube account for many, many years, my partner, Tom, is a hoarder. He is seriously messy. In fact, I made this vlog going through his car, trying to help him, I guess, find the engine in the car, you could say. And guess what? Our two daughters are just as bad. However, one thing I'm really proud of is I've always stayed strong and true to my love of minimalism because it really helps find peace, harmony, and a sense of clarity amongst the absolute noise, destruction, temptation, frustration, and exhaustion. So I wanted to share with you what I do, why, and what really helps keep the peace for all of us with a very different creative neurodivergent family. So number one, mindset. So minimalism is my thing. I never try and impose it on other people, in particular, my other family members. It is my thing that helps me feel safe, makes me feel secure. So I never try and force anyone else to live a life of minimalism. And I understand that if I want to live a life of minimalism, I need to make it happen. I can't boss people around. I can't instruct people or direct people or demand that people live their life. That is my family members like me. And I take comfort in knowing that this is something purely for me. So if you are a busy working mother trying to keep your home neat and tidy and you love minimalism like me, what I would suggest is just make it about you. Take comfort, take joy, take pride for yourself as you do your thing and live a life in alignment to your value system. Number two, I jump on things quickly. The moment I can see things getting a little bit messy or dirty or a little bit hectic, I jump on it immediately. I won't say, look, I'll just wait until the end of the day when everyone's gone to bed and I have a moment of quiet and I'll clean and tidy up everything then and there. No, that for me backfires because during the day, that mess as it currently stands becomes so much worse. It compounds. And quite often at the end of the day, I'm exhausted and tired and I just want to go to bed. So I will jump on it the moment I see mess, which means I quickly and easily get the house back into order again. Now there's another blessing behind this. You see, I create a fresh benchmark. You see, it's the kind of like the kitchen sink analogy. If someone sees a clean kitchen sink with no dirty dishes in there, and they go and try and put their dirty dish in that clean sink, they're gonna know whose dirty dish that was. Whereas if a kitchen sink is piled up with lots of dirty dishes and pots and pans and cutlery, and that person, same person, comes along, they know that they can get away with not cleaning up after themselves because they can just put it in there with everyone else's. It kind of gives them the perfect excuse to not even try and help keep the house clean and tidy. So I really find that when I do create a nice, calm, clean space and everyone is in that space, they feel a little bit of exposure if they try and mess it up because I can quickly and see who the culprit is. And by regularly keeping on top of it, when it comes to the end of the day, when I'm exhausted and tired, there isn't too much cleaning, tidying, and reorganizing left for me to do. And it means I get to bed at a realistic time and I get a good quality night's sleep knowing my house is clean, tidy, and organized. Maybe not clean, but definitely tidy and organized. Number three, I have a great strategy. So I'm a little bit OCD and I actually shared this hack many, many years ago and you guys loved it. So it's called my 10 strategy. What I will do when I'm feeling a little bit anxious and overwhelmed, I will look for the number 10, which is my favorite OCD number. And I will look at the mess and just simply say to myself to get myself, I guess, recalibrated again and reset. And I will just go and put 
10 things away in that particular space. Now that simple act of putting 10 things away normally brings back a sense of clarity, a sense of calm and organization again. And sometimes in fact, it will put me in a great momentum or rhythm to maybe continue on putting a few more things away because I've done 10, there's only three more things left, may as well just knock them off. And again, the home is quickly and easily back to what the space and place that I like it to be. Other really fun hack that I share around the number 10 is I will set a timer for 10 minutes and I will use that 10 minutes to just focus on putting as many things away as possible. It's like a game. I try and beat the clock and get as much done in those 10 minutes. The moment the alarm goes off, I simply stop and make peace with the fact that I had a really good go at creating some order in my home again. Now, now, I recommend trying this out for yourself, whether it be putting 10 things away or putting a timer on for 10 minutes. And if you like, include the kids. This is a really fun way of teaching my girls how to count from 1 to 10. Kiss. Hi. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Number four, I use technology. Technology can really reduce the amount of stuff in my home, particularly paperwork. You see, I'm actually quite old school. I love a notebook and a pen. So therefore, I'm always surrounded by endless notes and pieces of paper of my own, which really goes against my love of minimalism because I feel very suffocated. But by using technology in a smart way, it helps me not only stay organized, but reduces the chaos, the madness, the clutter and the distractions around my home. It means I'm less likely to lose those valuable bits of paper. I have a classic example to show you and explain the technology that I'm using, which of course is Adobe Acrobat, who is proudly partly sponsoring today's video. So thank you Adobe. So this is a classic example of how Adobe Acrobat has saved me so many brand cells and so many moments of anxiety and panic in losing things or having things destroyed by my kids. So I did the Gabby Bernstein manifesting challenge this time last year. It was amazing. And of course, I printed off all my notes because I'm old school. And I journaled all of my answers on these really important pieces of paper. This is so valuable because it allows me to see my progress throughout the year. How I'm tracking, what I'm learning, how I'm growing, what new awarenesses I'm gaining, what new strategies and techniques that I'm applying in my life. It's kind of like a personal diary. But to me, this is sacred, so I don't want to lose it. And I definitely don't want to risk my girls doodling on it. With Adobe Acrobat, you can organize pages quite easily. If there's any information I find from a web or a document that I've scanned and I'm not quite happy with its form, I can copy the text and Acrobat can automatically format my clipboard into a new page. Acrobat also allows you to comment on each page by highlighting the text and adding a comment. Best part is it's not messy and it doesn't impede the readability of documents. It's an essential tool for a minimalist like me saving so much on paper and pens. So now with Adobe Acrobat, I can scan and save all of this really important paperwork, as well as my continued growing lists of things to do and have them all saved and safe with the one spot within seconds. It makes my life so much more efficient and effective. And as you guys know, I love Adobe. I have their whole suite. I use their editing software for my videos. I use the generative fill for my photographs. And of course, I now use Adobe Acrobat for my signatures for both Tom and I. So if we ever need to sign something such as an important financial document, him and I being in different locations can quickly and easily sign the documents and have any important paperwork lodged quickly and efficiently. And of course, Adobe Acrobat signatures are password protected, so it's even safer. And then number five, I inspire my children. You know how I explained to you I never try and impose or force minimalism onto my family members? Well, that is definitely the truth. However, what I do try and do is educate them and inspire them and empower them to see the beautiful benefits that come from minimalism. The calm, tranquil space, the sense of order and organization. If we lose something, when we have a tidy space, we can find it easily. When we put things away correctly, they're less likely to get damaged and ruined, which means more pocket money that you can use for fun things rather than having to replace things. So what I really do with my children is when I'm tidying up with them, I make sure I sit down and show them and talk to them about the energy of the room, 
how much better it now feels. Now, I have been doing this with Rocco for years and he is a minimalist like me. He takes huge pride in keeping his bedroom neat, tidy and organized. I very rarely have to ask him to tidy up his room and he makes his bed beautifully. And Tom, who is a work in progress, when he sees the home neat, tidy and clean, he feels really proud. I can see how much happier he is. I can see the weight off his shoulders. And in fact, only the other day, he was telling me about how he really wants to make more of an effort in keeping the house clean and tidy and has found this new element within his life where he's actually becoming increasingly house proud. And also the girls. Tiger, not so much because she's only two, but Apple. I caught her making her bed the other day and taking a moment to really neatly put the pillows on her bed. And she actually came and found me and showed me and said, look how beautiful my room looks. She was so proud. So I took a moment to really embrace that, embrace her and be really proud and tell her how proud I was of this and how nice the energy feels. So just by planting small seeds in an inspiring and educating way, allowing your family members to actually see see what beautiful benefits come from minimalism, from taking that time, from taking that time to take a calm, tranquil moment in your home and how it creates space for your family to connect together in your home without worrying about all the list of things that need to be cleaned, tidied and put away because you work together in harmony as a team without even realizing it. Let me know if you have any other brilliant hacks that can help me and my family keep the love and passion of minimalism burning bright in my home. And if there are any other ideas or suggestions you have for the next video next week. Thank you everyone for watching. And again, thank you to Adobe Acrobat for partly sponsoring today's video.